in an experiment. Yeah, we didn't know yet. Why is light so far? Like, it sounds so simple. They had... This week, we'll be finding out about a quiet step forward in aeroplane technology. If you watch early 1900s footage of the Wright brothers demonstrating one of the first powered controlled aeroplanes and you listen very carefully, you probably won't hear anything because the footage doesn't have any sound. But the invention's gasoline powered engine turning two propellers presumably made a pleasing rattle as it flew along just above ground level. This week, you can see footage of a new type of flying machine, one that, even with the sound turned up, is remarkably silent as it gently glides across a sports hall a couple of metres above the floor. And silent is just the way that one of its creators, Stephen Barrett, wanted it. Well, the idea is, in a way, a childhood fantasy. I used to be a big fan of Star Trek and sort of thought that the, the future of flight shouldn't be things with propellers and turbines and should be more like with a kind of blue glow and something that silently glides through the air. Stephen works in the Department of Aeronautics and Astronautics at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, so he's pretty well-placed to create a glowy, futuristic-looking flying machine. But the method he's used to power his new plane has actually been around since not long after the first commercial flights. It dates back until at least the 1920s, where an eccentric inventor at the time started experimenting with high-voltage electrodes and uh, thought he had discovered um, anti-gravity, which of course was not the case, but that set some of the initial groundwork, some of the very, very old patents on uh, mechanisms for creating what's called an ionic wind. And those basic mechanisms are what lie behind the development of Stephen's new plane, a lightweight, fixed-wing aircraft with a five-metre wingspan powered by electric aerodynamic propulsion, or what's sometimes known as an ion drive. So what we did for this design is to try and stick to something that looks somewhat like a conventional aircraft. But under the wing, rather than conventional engines, it has a series of electrodes. And those consist of an array of very thin wires at the front and then an array of aerofoils at the back. Now, those thin wires at the front are set at a very high voltage, plus 20,000 volts. And where that high field strength occurs, it uh, creates a source of ions. The ions are created when electrons are knocked off nitrogen molecules by the wires of the positive electrode at the front. The ions are therefore positive nitrogen ions. Meanwhile, the aerofoils at the back of the plane are negative electrodes. Opposites attract, so the positive ions move towards the back of the plane. And so on that path from positive to negative, the ions collide with air molecules many, many times, transferring momentum uh, to the air, creating a breeze or an ionic wind that's left behind. And so as nitrogen ions push against the air molecules, thrust is created, silently and invisibly propelling the plane forward. Well, that was the theory anyway. Many attempts failed because of various things going wrong, like uh, structural failures, um, the power electronics frying itself. But the first day that it actually worked, it was about 50% power, so it was a power glide. But there was quite a lot of excitement um, and uh, a lot of cheering when that happened. From that first glide, the team was soon able to make the first fully powered flight. And it's no surprise they were so excited about it. It's taken decades to put this technology into practice in this way. For example, spacecraft have been using ion thrusters for decades, but with a design that only works in a vacuum. Here on Earth, it's relatively simple to create a little ion-driven lifter that jumps off a table, but that requires the craft to be attached by wires to a large power source nearby. The new plane has onboard batteries and is remote controlled. So what we achieved was the first ever sustained flight of an aeroplane that is propelled by electro-aerodynamic propulsion. And that's also, um, by many definitions, the first ever solid state flight, meaning no moving parts. This achievement has been made possible with modern technology, such as lightweight batteries. And it's an impressive feat of engineering to get it to work. Here's Chris Pister of the University of California, Berkeley. No one has ever been able to do this before, and plenty of people would have said, you know, no, that's not possible, that will never work. Chris works in this area himself and is optimistic about some of the applications, though perhaps not the ones involving futuristic glowing flying machines or ion-powered passenger planes. I'm sceptical of whether it will have practical application at large scale in the, in the atmosphere. I think that 
it's a technology that scales well. So for me as a micro robot person, um, propellers don't work well at a millimeter scale. Um, whereas this technology uh, has the same performance kind of independent of scale. So at a small scale, uh, this may end up being the best game in town. Potential applications include creating silent drones, which could be used to observe wildlife or monitor traffic in urban areas without creating noise pollution. Hopefully this is just the first step in developing useful flying ionocraft, and the sight of this silently gliding machine, with no visible power source or propulsion, may well inspire future researchers to explore new uses for this strange technology. It's cool because the physics is so different from the physics of, of flight that we're used to. And you, you don't have to be a physicist to appreciate that. That was Chris Piester. And we also heard from Stephen Barrett, whose paper is published in Nature Today. Find more coverage of the work at nature.com forward slash news. We'll also find the video of the plane in action.